What's up, guys? Back on the show here with Otis Kirk, our recruiting insider. And let's begin with Blaine Toll because this guy is visiting UT this weekend. Arkansas very much in the mix for this defensive end. Yeah, Blaine, uh, Blaine was at Arkansas last weekend, and he's at, as you well, he was there Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And as you said, he's at Tex uh, Tennessee this weekend. He's going to make a decision really quick, and right now. This will probably be his last official visit unless something changes with his plans. Uh, he said he hopes to make it. He, want, he wants to make a decision before, before the season starts, and he doesn't have any other visits lined up. And I, uh, I, I feel really good about Blaine. I, there was, you know, there for a while you felt good about Arkansas getting him. Then it was OU, and then you know I think Arkansas has bounced back. I, there was some reservation there, I think, on his part that Arkansas waited so long to offer, but I think. Steve Caldwell, Mark Smith, and, and Chad, and some of those guys, I think they leveled all that out, you know, and kind of, you know, I mean, smoothed it, up, you know, smoothed it out, and you know, just explained some stuff to him, and and you know, that's the impression I get. But but I, you know, I met, I, I talked to him when he was up here after he left, and uh, I feel really good about Arkansas getting him. You know, with the uh, Hogville top twelve, he's the number one player in the state. Uh, big kid, six six, two forty seven. If anyone hasn't seen him play can run, plays quarterback over there, plays defensive end, uh, could play tight end, but he wants to be on defense in college. But uh, just a kid at 6'6", 240, you know, almost 50 pounds, you find a place to play him, you know. And I tell you, he, he is a uh, – he's going to be a very good defensive end probably at Arkansas. I, I really see him. I've got him number one, and I, I, and I actually don't – I think there's a pretty decent crop in the state this year, but I think he's just the best. And uh, his, his size, potential, he plays at a smaller school. Will that hurt him in the sense that, you know, hey, did it hurt Melvin Bradley? You know, did it hurt some of the other guys that's come from a small school? I don't know. I mean, I think that's overstated, that stuff about being from a small school. Hey, if you can play, you can play. If you can't, you can't. And he can play. I remember you had uh, a ranking there in terms of the depth that is projected of what Arkansas could look like here down the road yeah. at defensive end. Really good article on hogville.net. Go to Hogville right now. Uh, the thing is, Otis, Vernon Broughton, if he comes to Arkansas, you talk about adding a big-time piece. It's very fluid right now. He's at Texas A&M this weekend. Yeah, and he's, he's a kid that kind of like we talked about with Blaine maybe looking at OU early. He's been thought to be a Texas lock for quite a while by most people that are familiar with his recruiting, but uh, when he came here to visit a few weeks ago, he brought everybody in his family and then some. He brought a massive group of people, <laughs> and his mom and them really fell in love with this place. His little brother likes it. You know, there's a lot to like about Arkansas, and I think they found a lot of things to like about it. Uh, is it enough to flip him, or not flip him because he's not committed, but I mean, is it enough to make him choose Arkansas? We'll have to see. I think it's gotten interesting anyway. And uh, I, I think A&M's in it. You know, he visited Ohio State. He's visited LSU. So he's, I mean, this is a kid that's got everybody in the country chasing him. And I thought it was huge of Chad and, and, and you know, those guys to get a visit from him. If they were to land him, think how big that would be, Drew. I mean, here's a kid, like I said, his visit, he's got a ton of offers, but his visits have been official visits, Ohio State, LSU, Texas, Texas a and and Arkansas. Let that sink in. Mm -hmm, that's a pretty nice list. Right? I mean, that's a and they're all legit. I mean, it's not like he's visited and some of these schools don't want him. Hey, he could pick any one of those five schools, and he could pick another five and name them, and they take him today, too. So he can go where he wants to, and uh, Arkansas has made it really interesting there. Alan Horace picked Arkansas, and he's a hard commit to Arkansas. He yeah. selected them in April. He is out of the class of 2020 at tight end. Yeah, he came in, and, and I, he was visiting for the camp last weekend, the elite camp last Saturday. But he came in and worked out at that camp. I was a little surprised because a lot of times, the, you know, like Ty Keith was here during one of the camps, but he didn't work out. But Allen actually went through the camp, so I got to see him catch passes and run routes. And, well, you could just look at him out there, and you could see the athletic ability. You know, this kid's a good basketball player, a uh, good football player. And you could just see what Arkansas and all these other schools, you know, saw in him. He uh, got good hands. Uh, I think he dropped one ball that I saw that maybe should have been caught. Maybe one, but uh, he's got very good hands, runs good routes, um, smooth out there on the field. He's not, I mean, he looks the part and he plays the part and he goes through it. You know what I'm saying is, I mean by this, I mean 
when you look at him, you see some kids at these camps that you think, man, that ought to be a freak, you know. And then they go out there and they either can't run or their, their hands are made of bricks or whatever, but not this kid. He passed the eyeball test inside when they were doing the testing, and then you get him outside on the field and you watch him, and you see exactly why Arkansas and everybody else loved Alan Norris. Well, you know, we were covering baseball. We were really into the College World Series, and just prior to the beginning of the College World Series, great news for Arkansas coming down. Chandler Morris has committed, of course, to the Razorbacks. Yeah. Son of Chad Morris, and he's going to be at the Elite 11. That's later this week. Yeah, that's at Frisco, and it starts Friday. It's at the Star there, if anyone's interested. But let me tell you, uh, if, if, if anyone in that area is, you know, down that area and wants to go by and see him, I'm sure you can get in there and watch him perform. Uh, Jacoby Criswell from Morrison will be there, too. Haynes Keene from Longview. But uh, by our – I got with some other recruiting guys, and we were talking by our – by what the, everybody's figured out, Chandler Morris will be the first Arkansas commitment to go to the Elite 11. I wondered about Mitch Mustang, but I don't think they had this like this Elite 11 back then. So I guess Chandler will be the first one. But uh, yeah, he chose Arkansas, and, and and he also he went through the passing academy version of the camp that uh, Friday. He committed on Friday, and and he worked out that evening that day at the passing academy. He. Uh, I'd seen him play, but he, he, you know, he, there again, when you see a guy like Chandler Morris and Alan Horse out here at these camps, you know why Arkansas and you know, Oklahoma, Clemson, you know, schools, Auburn, Alabama, you know, why big time schools came after these kids because it's so obvious. I mean, they, they look, they do the part out there on the field. And Chandler was making all the throws at that passing academy. He, 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 he's a real deal. And to get a dual threat quarterback, you know, I mean, that's what Arkansas really envisions in this offense. Right now, they're using the best quarterbacks they've got available. But when you get, eventually, they're going to get to the point that where the dual threat is the direction they're going. And, you know, K.J. Jefferson, Chandler Morris, and those guys, they fit that direction. Yeah, all the stars line up in terms of the system exactly. they want to run. All right, the Woo Pig Nick. It's coming up July 26th. And... This is a big-time cookout. Tell me a little bit more about this. Yeah, it's a deal where, you know, you smell the food cooking, but, you know, you wish you were there. You wish you were a recruit, but there's not a big demand. My, uh, Chad Moore's probably not going to offer a 5'9 old man. So, you know, I mean, they just clean those steaks or something, man. But I, they, I'll have to go buy me one down at the store. But, no, uh, guys like Mark, uh Alan Horse and Chandler yeah. will be here, but Martavius French, Bryson English, Bryson English, Eason. Yeah, I can't talk. Bryson Eason, the top. Those are two linebackers from Memphis Whitehaven. Mm -hmm. He and French, they're both going to be here for that. And those are priorities for John Chavis and his staff I and mean, Ken Ingram and stuff to get those two linebackers on board. They'll uh, they'll be here. Jashad Stewart will be here from Jonesboro. Already committed. Yeah. Uh, to uh, Arkansas, yeah. Brandon Frazier, mm -hmm. the tight end from uh, Texas, committed to Arkansas, mm -hmm. be here. There's going to be a bunch of kids here. This is, uh, you know, another kid, you know, that, uh, you know, these right now where they're at in this class, they really need linebackers, and that's where French and Easton come mm -hmm. into play. And, you know, you want to get them on board because if you do, that gives you two at that position, and I imagine they're going to try to sign three or four because they're short on depth at that position, you know. So that's just some uh, guys at that picnic that uh, they're going to want to try. It's, it's going to be Landon Jackson is a 2021 kid. Now, he's not 2020 like all the other kids we've talked about, but Landon Jackson is going to be a, is a big-time defensive lineman from Pleasant Grove, Texas, just outside of Texarkana. And uh, he's, he's got offers to everybody as well. And he's going to be here for that. And he is just a, he, he's just he's a dominating defensive lineman. He's much like a Broughton a Blaine Toe, someone like that. I mean, he can just dominate. Yes. He'll be here. So it's going to be a good group, uh, and they'll keep – and they've added more names, and they're going to keep adding names to it. As it's probably a, it's about a month away, as you said now, and uh, it's just something to keep an eye on because right now that's probably – one of the next big events over there. You know, they had their camps all last week. There was a ton of camps, and uh, they extended, you know, a few offers from the camp. But mostly it was just a bunch of kids getting to learn a lot of good fundamentals. They had a very good camps for 
linemen, specialists, was with Sunday before, but specialists, linemen, receivers, passing academy, the elite camp where they had coaches from all the schools here, Drew. That was so big for these kids, not just the ones that's going to Arkansas, but they had Arkansas, Arkansas State, they had Arkansas Baptist Junior College, and a bunch of the smaller schools in the state, you know, the uh, Andersons, UCA, Washtals, everybody, Arkansas State, they got in the northeastern state from Oklahoma's here, so they got to see a lot of kids. So again, that's the Woo Pig Nick coming up July 26th. Otis Kirk with our recruiting report here on the Pig Trail. We have LPGA news to talk about. It's coming up right after this.